Well, howdy everyone, and today I'm looking at a classic Canon L series lens that's been popular for a long time now. The 100 to 400 mm f4.5 to 5.6 IS USM L. Its design stretches back to the late 90s, back in the days of film cameras, and it's one of Canon's earlier lenses to have image stabilization, which is probably what cemented its popularity in the first place. This lens's excellent zoom range of 100 to 400 mm makes it a longer version of your typical 70 to 300 mm lens. It's a lot of fun to use a lens with this kind of zoom range. You can zoom out to look around for a subject and then zoom in to get tight pictures of things that are pretty far away. As such, it can be particularly useful for wildlife photography as well as ports photography. Well, if you're outside in the light. This lens's maximum aperture of f4.5 to 5.6 means that it doesn't really let in a lot of light to your camera's sensor. As I mentioned, this lens does feature image stabilization. It's one of Canon's earlier systems, but it works quite well. Here's some footage with the stabilization turned off and now turned on. As you can see, it doesn't hold the image perfectly still, but it helps quite a lot nonetheless, which is vital for any camera lens as long as 400mm. So getting sharp pictures shouldn't be too much of a problem for you with a shutter speed of 100th of a second or so. So the lens has nice parameters. Let's take a look at its build quality. As you can see immediately, it's quite a beast, being big and heavy and weighing about 1.3 kilos. It's made of metal, so it's quite seriously rugged. I imagine it could survive quite a few knocks and drops here and there. Its most notable and rather unusual feature is its slightly old-fashioned push-pull-zoom mechanism. I quite like push-pull-zoom lenses, they're fun, but the sheer weight of this lens makes it a little inconvenient as I keep finding myself adjusting the tightness of the mechanism to stop the lens collapsing down all the time. A design flaw is that the tightness ring tends to pull the focus ring along with it, which can also be annoying. However, that focus ring is very smooth and precise to turn in use. As usual for a Canon L lens, it has full-time manual focusing, so you can turn that focus ring even if the lens isn't set to manual focus. The autofocus system is super fast on this lens and very quiet indeed. Even more importantly, it works very accurately. Overall, this is a pretty bulky lens that's built like an over-engineered Victorian iron bridge, i.e. well. Let's look at image quality. I'll start by seeing how it works on a full-frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. I've turned on chromatic aberration correction and peripheral illumination. First off, at 100mm and f4.5, the lens is very sharp in the middle of the image, with quite neutral colours and contrast. Over in the corners, well again the picture quality is great. You can squeeze out a touch more resolution if you stop the aperture down to f8, but ultimately it's sharp. Let's zoom in to 250mm. The maximum aperture is now f5. Again, the lens is fairly sharp in the middle of the image. Not amazing, but pretty good. The resolution in the corners is just ok. Even with the aperture stopped down to f11, the image quality is just good in those corners. Finally, we'll zoom all the way into 400mm. Again, it's the same story. Image quality in the middle of the picture is fairly sharp, and contrast levels are good. The image quality in the corners is a little softer, but there's a touch more sharpness when you stop the lens down to f8 and further down to f11. On the whole, this lens has, well, a slightly boring resolution characteristic on a full frame camera. It's basically always reasonably sharp. It doesn't seem to get razor sharp at any point, even when you stop down its aperture. It's simply pretty good and it's quite resistant to chromatic aberration, which is also quite reassuring to see. Ok, let's put the lens to work by challenging it with a high resolution APS-C camera, in this case a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. The pixels are tiny on this camera, which presents quite a challenge. Let's see how this lens can cope. 
At 100mm and f4.5, sharpness levels are just ok in the middle of the image. Over in the corners, the picture quality remains quite good, so we're seeing quite even sharpness here. As usual, you can get a little more sharpness by stopping the lens down to f8 from the corners and back into the middle. Zoom in to 250mm and the lens is still just about doing ok. Sharpness levels aren't too bad in the middle, although the corners of the image are a touch softer. Again, stop down to f8 for a bit more sharpness, but it's not the most punchy picture quality I've ever seen. Finally, at 400mm, sharpness is still not too bad in the middle of the image. Picture quality doesn't particularly impress, but it doesn't fail either. The resolution in the corners is just ok. Overall, the 100-400mm isn't quite as sharp on an APS-C camera as it is on full frame, which is typical for a lot of camera lenses, even Canon's best L lenses. But it still performs very evenly, and even at 400mm, you can depend on it for reasonably good picture quality. Ok, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting levels. They are no real problem on an APS-C camera, so I'll test it back on a Canon 6D. At 100mm we see no real distortion at all, but at f4.5 the corners are a touch dark. Stop the lens down to f8 and that vignetting is reduced. By the time you zoom into 200mm the lens is displaying a little pincushion distortion, and at 400mm this is slightly more noticeable, but I've definitely seen worse than this before. Again, vignetting is a little strong with the aperture wide open at f5.6, but stop down to f8 for even illumination across the image frame. So it's a reasonably good performance for distortion, and a little bit average for vignetting. The lens can only focus down to 1.8 meters, which isn't really a very close distance at all. At f5.6, the close-up image quality is not bad, and stop down to f8 to see a considerable improvement and some very good sharpness levels. A lot of slightly older telephoto lenses tend to struggle a little bit when it comes to working against bright lights, and this one is no exception. You can see quite a lot of flaring and loss of contrast as this lens struggles away. I've seen worse than this before, but it's best to use the lens hood provided whenever you can. It's good to see that this lens has quite a nice quality bokeh. Those out of focus backgrounds virtually always look nice and smooth, even when the lens is dealing with quite complex backgrounds. At the end of the day, the 100-400mm f4.5-5.6 to IS USM-L gives one of the most even performances I've ever seen on a zoom lens. It's never really incredibly sharp, but at the same time, the resolution levels are never really bad. It produces nice looking pictures with fairly good contrast, low distortion, and nice bokeh in the backgrounds. It's fun and versatile to use, and built very well indeed. There are lots of strong rumours at the moment that Canon are going to update this lens with a new version, and that wouldn't be a bad thing, as cameras are coming in higher resolutions, and it could really do with some sharper optics. But essentially, this is a faithful old lens that's given a lot of fantastic pictures to a lot of wildlife, landscape, and sports photographers. You can't go far wrong with this very solid, super telephoto lens.